Today, we'll be looking at basic freshwater fish identification. Not only will knowing exactly what you're catching increase your enjoyment and satisfaction of fishing, but of course, if you're harvesting fish, you need to know what species you're catching and whether there's a size or a bag limit. As we begin looking at some fish identification basics, one of the first things to look at is the general shape of the fish. Is it long and cylindrical like a bass, or is it flat and hand-shaped like a crappie or speck? We'll begin with Florida's most popular freshwater fish, the largemouth bass. This is a larger green fish that's long and cylindrical, has a dark stripe running down the body, and has a large mouth that gives it its name. In fact, the largemouth bass has a mouth so big, it's often called a bucket mouth. And its mouth is so large that in addition to eating its usual fare of crayfish, frogs, and other fish and minnows, bass have also been known to eat turtles, snakes, and birds. Largemouth bass get to eight to 10 pounds or bigger. And if you fish for bass, make sure you sign up for our trophy catch program, which rewards you for documenting and releasing your trophy weighing eight pounds or more. Second in Florida popularity is the black crappie or speck. The main thing to notice on this species is the flat hand-shaped appearance and the speckled body pattern. Also notice the very small mouth and the large dorsal and anal fins. Probably next in popularity is a sunfish called the bluegill. This small, flat, hand-shaped fish has a very small mouth. The other thing to notice about it is that it has a dark gill patch or ear flap. It also has a black spot on the dorsal fin. These fish usually have dark vertical bars and male bluegill can get a copper or golden coloring on the forehead that gives them the nickname Copperhead. Closely related to the bluegill is the red ear sunfish. The red ear sunfish grows a little bit bigger to a pound or more, has a more reddish coloration, and the main identifying mark is that reddish edge to the gill flap. It's also a flat panfish shaped fish. Notice the small mouth and the similar body shape to the bluegill. Next up is the channel catfish. Catfish are easy to identify because of those whiskers by the mouth, and the channel catfish is one of the most popular species and is stocked by the Fish and Wildlife Commission throughout the state. In addition to the whiskers by the mouth, notice the speckles on the body as well as the deeply forked tail. And catfish can get to 10 or 15 pounds or even larger. The brown bullhead is another popular catfish species that's easy to identify because of its whiskers. It's smaller than the channel catfish, growing to only a few pounds, and has a darker, more mottled coloration. Another similar species, the yellow bullhead, also is fairly small, uh, rarely exceeding a pound, and has a yellowish body. Now we'll talk about a few exotic species from other countries. The butterfly peacock bass is the only legally introduced exotic fish in Florida. And it was actually introduced in order to eat other exotic fishes and reduce their numbers in our Florida waters. The butterfly peacock bass is similar to the largemouth bass in general shape and has a similarly large mouth, although not quite as big. The peacock bass is brightly colored, yellow to orangish on the fins with three vertical dark bars and a yellow eye spot on the tail. Another very popular exotic found in Southern Florida is the Oscar. The Oscar is another panfish shaped fish, kind of flat and cylindrical, similar to our bluegill and red ear sunfish, but it grows a little bit larger than our native fishes, often exceeding a pound or so. It's a dark fish with yellow to orangerish coloration. Notice the small mouth and the red eye spot on the tail. This fish is found generally in Southern Florida. Another exotic fish found generally in Southern Florida is the Mayan cichlid. This popular fish is also about the same size as the Oscar, growing a little bit bigger than our native sunfishes, and is also flat 
and somewhat cylindrical in shape with that typical small mouth that we're seeing of these panfish species. It's a bright orangish to reddish color and often has vertical stripes along the body and a turquoise ring on the tail. Now let's look at a couple of important minnow species before we wrap up with Florida freshwater fish identification. This is probably Florida's best known minnow, the golden shiner, and a top bait for largemouth bass and peacock bass. This minnow probably averages about six or seven inches, but can actually get to over a pound, and large golden shiners are excellent bait for the biggest trophy largemouth bass. The golden shiner is fairly flat, but has a longer shape like the largemouth bass. It has a small mouth, a golden to orangish or silvery color, and it also has an arched back and a single triangular shaped dorsal fin. Last, we get to the mosquito fish or gambusia. This tiny minnow only grows to about an inch or an inch and a half, so much, much smaller than I'm showing you here. Despite its small size, this little minnow is abundant throughout Florida and may actually be one of the most common Florida fishes. This tiny fish is also very important as a forage species for smaller largemouth bass and for sunfish and panfish species. The way to identify the gambusia is its longer cylindrical shape, its tiny mouth, and as you look at the tail here, vertical stripes on the tail. Some individuals may also have a very distinct black spot on the belly. So that's a basic introduction to identifying some of Florida's most popular freshwater fish. Good luck and tight lines.